Hello folks. Some of you have been asking for comparisons between some of the lasers that I've been reviewing lately, so in this video I'm going to do a quick review of the Laser Pecker 2 engraver to show you its features, and then we'll take a look back at my test videos for the Laser Pecker 3 and the Laser Pecker 4 and compare the differences between them to help you decide which of the three engravers is the best fit for your needs and budget. The Laser Pecker 2 is a 5 watt blue diode laser that has an engraving precision of 5 hundredths of a millimeter and can engrave in 2K resolution at speeds of up to 600 millimeters per second. It's the most affordable of the three engravers, but it's also the smallest, with a standard working area of 100 millimeters square, which can be expanded up to 100 by 2000 millimeters with the roller rotary. The stand attaches to the base plate with a couple of screws, and the module is secured to the bracket using the thumb screw. As I mentioned, the module uses a 5 watt blue diode laser which can engrave a variety of materials from wood and paper and leather to black acrylic, anodized aluminum, and stainless steel. The module has a touch screen on the top for previewing your work area and turning the module on and off, and it has various ports in the back for connecting the power adapter, electric stand, and other extensions like the roller and this laser shield, which helps protect you from the laser, but it also has a fan to exhaust smoke and gases away from the work area and your workspace. For my first test, I'm going to engrave and cut my logo out of this piece of 2mm birch plywood. The first method for setting the focal point is by using a ruler to set the bottom of the module at 110mm from the surface of your workpiece. The next method for setting the focal point is to use the focus stick. The third method for setting the focal point is to use the laser shield, which is exactly 110 millimeters high, so it just needs to be lowered until it barely touches the surface of the workpiece, and it's all set. Like the other engravers, the LP2 can be controlled using Laser Pecker's smartphone app or their Design Space software for PC. Both are easy to use and offer loads of features to help increase both your productivity and creativity. Next, I'm going to engrave and cut the same logo out of a piece of 2mm black acrylic. Of course, it can also mark, engrave, and cut various types of paper and cardboard, and other organic materials like leather and even food. It can't etch any other bare metal, but it can etch stainless steel to produce different shades and colors from grays to blues and browns depending on your power and depth settings. However, it can etch any painted metals. As I mentioned earlier, this engraver can also be used for engraving objects at an angle by loosening the thumb screw on the side of the electric stand and adjusting the angle of the mounting bracket to match the angle of the workpiece. All of the engravers are portable handheld machines, but in slightly different ways. The LP2 can be detached from the electric stand and base plate altogether, and uses the laser shield as a rest and to maintain the focal point if you want to engrave something on the go.
The Laser Packer 3 is very similar to the Laser Packer 2 at first glance. It has a similar design with the module mounted to an electric stand and a small base plate. However, this engraver is very different inside and includes a few upgrades outside as well. The most noticeable is that the base plate has a removable section. This allows for portable engraving of large objects because unlike the Laser Packer 2, this module stays attached to the electric stand during portable engraving because it doesn't come with a laser shield to maintain the focal point. That's because the laser that this module uses is a 2 watt infrared laser. It's less than half the power of the LP2 and it can't cut materials like wood and paper, but it can do things that the LP2 can't. This machine is designed specifically for etching and engraving almost any metal from steel and copper to gold and silver, or any colored plastic that's commercially available, or any material with a painted surface, and it can do it in 4K resolution with a precision of one hundredth of a millimeter at speeds of up to 800 millimeters per second. Setting the focal point for the LP3 can be done two ways. The first is by using a ruler, like with the LP2. The second method is by pressing the preview button on the top of the module which will cause the laser to output a blue rectangle representing your work area, but also a set of two red dots which need to be combined into one by raising or lowering the module until they converge. Once that's done, the focal point is set. Here you can see that the laser does a nice job etching both coated and bare aluminum. Then I tried some bare copper and nickel plated copper before moving on to etching some chrome, steel and anodized aluminum tools in the workshop, all with great results. After testing different materials, I etched a few logos on some plastic parts like the USB adapter for my drone, and also the drone itself. Engraving bright plastics can be a problem for some desktop engravers, but not this one. This machine does it well and produces professional looking results. As I mentioned earlier, this engraver can also engrave objects at any angle. Here I'm etching my logo into an aluminum air intake port for my electric buggy. Of course, being a portable handheld engraver, I could have just held it in place on the buggy and engraved it that way, but the logo took around 20 minutes, so that's about 18 minutes too long for me to stand around holding something. But I did move the engraver over to my tube bender and engrave my logo into it as well. Both the Laser Packer 2 and the Laser Packer 3 can be paired with extensions like this roller rotary, which can be used to engrave cylindrical objects like this socket. The rotary also comes with a bag of various sized rubber rings that can be slipped over smooth objects like this chromoly tube to provide better grip and prevent slipping. I did see some evidence of that during the first attempt, so I used the rubber rings and it hasn't happened since. Of course I couldn't resist engraving the rotary itself. The Laser Packer 4 looks similar to the Laser Packer 2 and the Laser Packer 3 and has all of the basic functions that they do such as the electric stand and portability, but it's a much larger machine with a more robust design and for good reason. The LP4 is the world's first portable dual laser engraver. The module for this machine houses both a 10 watt blue diode laser and a 2 watt infrared laser to combine the cutting and engraving capability of the LP2 and the LP3 engravers into one machine so it can handle working almost any material that you want. It can engrave an AK resolution at speeds of up to 2000 millimeters per second in a standard work area that's almost twice the size of the LP2 and LP3 at 160 millimeters by 120 millimeters, but it can be expanded to 160 by 300 millimeters using the slide extension, which I'll show in a few moments.
The LP4 also comes with a laser shield equipped with an exhaust fan like the LP2, but it's not used for setting the focal point or portable engraving, and as such, it's just secured to the bottom of the module using the magnets that are embedded in the top of the shield to make it easier to remove and attach when needed. Notice after turning on the engraver, a touchscreen lights up on top of the module. This provides information about which laser is being used, the file history, job progress, etc. And also allows you to switch between lasers manually by swiping back and forth across the screen. The lasers can also be selected through LaserPecker's Design Space app and software, and set up in layers to automatically switch back and forth between different engraving and cutting processes when needed. The focal point for the LP4 is set like the focal point for the LP3 by using a ruler to set the module at 150mm from the work surface, or by combining the two red dots in preview mode. For my first test using the LP4, I cut the same logo out of the same plywood that I used when testing the LP2, and got equally impressive results. It made a clean cut with no surface burn around the engraved region. Next, I engraved a high-resolution 3D image into birch plywood, which also turned out really nice. Just like the LP2, the diode laser in the LP4 can cut and engrave almost any organic material from wood to food, as well as etched stainless steel or any painted metal. I then engraved and cut a piece of acrylic, but instead of using the same laser for both processes, I wanted to show how the engraver automatically switches between lasers when needed, so I set up the file in the software so that the logo was done by the infrared laser which would etch the surface and produce a bright textured finish, and then automatically switch to cutting the outline with the diode laser. My power setting for cutting was a little low, but it did a nice job regardless. Just like the LP2 and LP3, the LP4 can angle engrave by adjusting the angle of the module mounting bracket. Unlike the LP2 and the LP3, the LP4 can engrave images in 8K resolution, like this cougar that I etched into a sheet of coated aluminum. Of course, the infrared laser can engrave almost any metal or plastic, just like the LP3. What I really like about the LP4 is its expandability. It comes with a riser attachment for the module mounting bracket which raises the module a couple of inches to compensate for the height of the slide extension. The slide extension is basically a conveyor that moves your workpiece forward and backwards to more than double the work area from 160 by 120 millimeters to 160 by 300 millimeters, which I demonstrated by engraving Led Zeppelin's logo into the back of my ukulele. The other great thing about this machine is that it's capable of proper batch engraving and cutting. To show this, I set up 8 wood jar tags on the slide extension without worrying about their placement at first. Then I turned on batch engraving mode in the software and set up some text to engrave onto the tags. Once in preview mode, it allows me to select each text individually to show its position in the work area so that I could adjust the tag for that text accordingly before moving on to position the next one. After the tags were positioned and the engraving was started, the software automatically moves from one job to the next until the process is complete, without the need for me to engage it. The chuck rotary is another convenient extension which is a step up from the roller rotary that the LP2 and the LP3 uses because it allows you to engrave almost any round or cylindrical object from tumblers to baseballs to wedding rings. The kit also comes with a tailstock to support long objects and various jaw attachments for the chuck. So that's it for this video folks. If you have any questions about any of these machines, then please post them in the comments below. 
If you are interested in getting one of them for yourself, then check out the links in the video description and pin comment, and use the coupon code JB50 so you can save a bit of money on your order. If you have any other video requests, then post them in the comments below as well. And if you like this one, then let me know by giving it a like, and make sure you're subscribed to see more. Until then, take care folks.